This video covers the concept of standing waves. Imagine that we have two people stand at the front of the classroom and hold a long slinky. When they just simply hold the slinky, it will look something like this, which is not that exciting. But if one person rapidly begins to move their arms up and down, a motion at first will seem kind of chaotic, but eventually a point will be reached where the slinky seems to move in an organized way, which would look like this. And if the person starts to move their hands faster, it would begin to look like this, and even faster, it would begin to look like this. So when the one person moved their arms up and down, the student creates a wave that travels from the original student down to the second student and is reflected, reflect, reflected back to the original moving student. When the waves create these kinds of patterns and you don't see any more chaotic moving spring, instead you tend to only see these patterns, that is when a standing wave is made. A standing wave is whenever you see these kinds of patterns or images. So as slinkies amplitude when it's at a maximum, we call this position antinode. And the slinky is positioned when it's at a minimum or when the slinky doesn't actually move at all. This is called a node. Whenever there are three sets of antinodes, the standing wave is said to be the third harmonic. When there are only two sets of antinodes, the standing wave is said to be the second harmonic. And if there's only one set of antinodes, the standing wave is said to be the first harmonic. So let's look at standing waves for sound for a moment. We know that sound waves are simply just alternating areas of high and low pressure and look something like this. Nodes for sound waves are the regions where the pressure stays constant and does not vary. Kind of just how before the nodes for the string or the slinky wave was when the slinky did not move at all. And the anti-nodes for sound waves are when the pressure varies the maximum amount. We like to play around with standing waves uh, by using different tubes. So let's say that we have two different tubes that both have open ends. Open ends are always going to be anti-nodes, a region where the pressure varies the maximum amount. If there is one node in the middle of the tube, the sound wave is said to be the first harmonic and would look something like this if we were to convert it to the image like we had with the slinky. Now let's look at the second tube. All right, since we have two open ends, we know that they're going to be anti-nodes. And if we add an extra node in the middle, so we have two nodes, this is going to be called the second harmonic. And our wave is going to look something like this. All right? And we can also do the same kind of experiment, but then we can close one end by submerging the tube in water. All right? And whenever we have a closed end, we know that that area is going to be a node. So we know that we still are going to have anti-nodes at the open end, and this is going to be the first harmonic, where our wavelength looks something like this. And if we were going to add in a second node, this ends up being the third harmonic that looks something like this. Now the reason why this is the first and this one's the third and we skipped the second harmonic is because if you look at the uh, tube on the right, we can see that we have three different little sections of what was originally the first harmonic, all right? And notice that there are only an odd number of harmonics for the open-closed system, as I discussed previously.